This video is about the Tandy 1000 EX sold in the United States and Canada by Radio Shack. I was lucky enough to find this machine in peripherals on Craigslist for free. The seller told me it was his childhood PC but no longer worked, so he was going to toss it. These pictures are from when I first brought the computer home. The Tandy 1000 line of computers offered a cheap way to get into the IBM PC and PC Junior compatible market. Because of the IBM PC Junior compatibility, it had 16 color graphics and 3 channel sound, which were superior to the regular PC and PC XT, which only had CGA graphics and the well known PC beep speaker. The EX model was sort of an all in one unit, which had a built in keyboard, 360K floppy drive, along with a few ports. It had 256K of RAM built in. Opening the computer, I found it had two expansion cards installed, a RAM board along with an RS232 adapter. Removing the motherboard revealed that there was some water in this machine at one point, but there were no obvious signs of corrosion on the board. All three floppy drives are normal TIAC 360K PC compatible drives. The computer definitely didn't work when turned on, just as advertised. When powering on the computer, there were some signs of life, like the power LED would come on, but there would be no video on the screen and there would just be a continuous tone from the speaker. Now I know a little bit about the sound chip used in the Tandy and the PC Junior and basically when you first power up that chip it produces random tones until the computer initializes the chip which basically silences it. If you just give it power you'll get sound. So that's definitely what's happening here with this Tandy. So here's the Tandy 1000 and I've totally gutted it, it's hooked up to the monitor, which the monitor does work. I've connected this monitor to my 286. I've already cleaned up and made sure all the connections are good on this motherboard. The power supply is working well. But when I turn on this computer, you just get that, the continuous beep tone. So clearly it's not initializing. So after doing some troubleshooting with this board with my oscilloscope, I found that the main chip that generates the CPU clock which is this one right here where I have bad chip written on it. This is not generating the CPU clock. It actually synthesizes a bunch of different clocks that run several components on this board. And you can see here there's two crystal oscillators that power it. All of the other clocks are working properly. All the inputs are working and all the outputs are working fine. But there is no CPU clock. And I even lifted the pin on the chip to kind of disconnect all the electrical components on the board to see if maybe something on the board was shorted out and was pulling the clock signal low. But even with a pin bent out and not in the socket, there's no clock signal. So I knew pretty much that that chip is bad. At the minimum, that chip is bad. But there may be other problems with this board, I just don't know. Looking closely at the board here, you can see that there's actually a bunch of custom chips. This one here is the microprocessor, and I think this one is the ROM. But that's a custom chip, and that's a custom chip, and I think a couple of these other ones are also Tandy chips. Now, of course, it's really hard to find replacement parts for this computer. I mean, these Tandy chips here have long been discontinued. The one that I think is bad here is Tandy part number 807-5306. I thought all hope would be lost that there would be no way to find a replacement clock synthesizer chip. But sure enough, after looking up the part numbers on here, this is a VLSI part, I was able to find a company in the UK and actually order the part. The name of the company is AutoGuard, AutoGuardUK.com. I talked to someone at the company and essentially they bought up a huge stock of Tandy parts when Tandy closed up shop in England. And because all of these computers were also sold in the UK, they still have new unused replacement parts in stock. So if you have a Tandy and you need to find a particular chip that you know is bad, go to AutoGuard and see what they have. But I was able to procure this chip, I think it was about 15 or 16 pounds. I was able to get this delivered to me shipped for about $20 US. So let's take a look and see what we got in here. Well, here we go. So this is the part I just got from them. If you look in here, what looks like a candy bar is actually a chip wrapped up in some aluminum foil here, which is good for anti-static protection during transport. This is like unwrapping a piece of candy. I'm obviously taking a gamble here because it, this chip is definitely bad on this computer, but it could well be that there are other chips that are blown out as well. And I may replace this and I'm gonna be in no better situation. But really there's only one way to find out is try this out. So here are the two parts side by side. And while the part number is exactly the same, 807-5306, that's the Tandy part number for this custom chip. The other markings are different and these are higher. So I'm hoping that this chip is actually newer. You can see here that these were factory installed bypass caps here on here. And one of those outputs is the actual clock lead. I think if I recall, it's the one with this uh, orange capacitor. And the other one is the power input lead. 
So hopefully they've actually fixed those issues with the newer chip. So I'm not going to necessarily put those on right away. If I find there are stability issues, I may transfer these over or install new caps. I can't really tell any markings that look like the date. This one has 86 on it, E286, but E2792. It's possible this chip was made in 92, actually. If I recall, the seller told me that they bought up the stock of all the Tandy parts in 1993. But as far as I know, this chip was only ever used in this particular Tandy, the Tandy 1000 EX and perhaps the HX, some of the very early ones. The later ones run at a higher clock speed. I think the computer's clock speed is 8 megahertz. Anyways, I'm going to put this in, and we're going to see if this fixes the problem. All right, new chip's in. Moment of truth. Okay, what's going to happen? Here we go. Wow. Okay. Oh, look at that! Memory size! I just need to adjust the monitor here. Oh my god, it works! <laughs> I need to uh, clean the pots on this monitor. They are dirty. Phoenix Software BIOS Insert System Disk. I can't believe it fixed the computer. So this clock chip was bad all along. Amazing. So I actually have a memory expansion board. Let's put that in and see if it works. So this is the Tandy um, memory expansion board. It's actually called the 1000EX memory expansion board cat number 25062. This adds another 256K of RAM which are these chips here, and it adds a DMA controller. So apparently this speeds up the performance on the computer quite dramatically. Now you're looking at these, these expansion connectors. These are just an extension of the ISA bus. Looking up the pinouts, you could easily get a you know adapter that goes from this to an ISA connector and use regular expansion cards. So let's put this in and see if this is working. A lot of people apparently have trouble with RAM chips um, on these older boards, and that may well be the problem too here. Let's see what happens. Okay, memory expansion board is in. Let's give it a try. Memory size 384. Totally appears to be working, this computer. I am stoked. Okay, so I'm putting the computer back together a little bit. Just, I had it completely apart for troubleshooting, so I put the internal floppy drive back in. Now, something that's very interesting is these Tandy 1000s used TIAC 360K 5 and a quarter inch floppy drives, right? Here's the part number. TIAC FD55BV. Basically 360K, and I think these other letters mean that it's uh, kind of this white, white color front. So, something that was interesting is people were telling me that Tandy floppy drives are not compatible with regular PC floppy drives. This computer came with the two external drives, so I have disassembled all of them, so this is one of the ones from the external drive. Now the internal drive here is fully compatible with standard PC, so if your floppy drive is bad, you can absolutely take one of these and put it as the internal drive. But, there's something you have to do. If we look at the bottom here, now this is the one that from the external chassis, so underneath the drive on the controller board, you have some jumpers up here. Now I don't know if these are different on the high density drives or whatnot, but on the 360Ks, all of them look the same here. And you have two jumpers here. One is labeled DS1 and the other one is DSO. Now to put this drive inside the internal bay on this computer, the jumper has to be in the other position, which is DSO. On the DS1 position, I presume this works in the external chassis, but if I plug this into my standard PC, this drive works normally plugged into my 286. So that's the little top tip. If you need to use a regular floppy drive in a Tandy, change that jumper so it's the other position. Okay, so here we are with the floppy drive connected, and let's see what happens here. I have an MS-DOS floppy installed in there, and let's turn this on. So the seek sound is good. And there we go, MS-DOS 2.11, copyright 1983, Tandy version 2.11.24, license the Tandy Corp. There is no real-time clock in this computer because it's a PC Junior or basically like an IBM XT. It's got an 8088-2 processor, so you do have to set the clock every time you boot it. But great, it booted up. So I'm going to connect the keyboard next and we're going to see how well that works. Alright, so here's the Tandy keyboard. I was lucky to get this Tandy for free and look at the condition of the keyboard. It's a little dirty and I haven't cleaned it at all, but it's perfect. No broken keys, no yellowing, which is amazing considering this computer's from 1986. Nice action on all the keys, and the way this connects, just standard two ribbon cables, and then the LEDs connect with this connector. That just goes straight to these LEDs, which I think are like speed, power, and maybe floppy drive.
Nice. <laughs> Look at how slow that is. 4.77 megahertz. Ooh, look at that raw speed mode. Fast. 7.16 megahertz. I guess that's a bit faster. This is the old fan in the Tandy 1000 here. It's just mounted behind the power supply. It's a Misumi, Misumi brushless fan. It's not horribly noisy, but it's not great either. And this thing is 30 years old now. It still turns relatively well. Anyhow, I'm switching out for a Panaflow that I just had in my drawer. It's the same size, so it'll mount perfectly. I'm just gonna solder up the wires. That should quiet up this computer a little bit. So something that's interesting is someone had been inside this Tandy a bunch of times before and the screws were all haphazard, mixed up, and some were missing. All right, what's all this you ask? This here is RF shielding. It's um, flexible, plastic coated kind of metal strips. And originally all of this was on top of the motherboard, sort of covering it all up. And this is not necessary for the operation of the computer. This was just to meet FCC compliance. Because the Tandy is a plastic case and it's not metal coated, so this doesn't really actually do anything for the operation of the computer. So I'm not gonna reinstall that stuff. To aid in repairing this in the future or to not have all that crap inside here, I'm gonna leave all of that off. So the Tandy's coming together. It's partially assembled. I have the RAM expansion and DMA card installed. I deox the connector. Uh, everything is kind of cleaned and actually fully mounted now. And the next card to install is this, which is a serial interface board. The Tandy has a built-in parallel port. Of course, it's a proprietary connector, but this is actually a serial board. And it's funny because that looks like a parallel connector, but you have to use a gender changer on to connect it to a modem. But again, this just connects to the expansion bus here. So like I said before, this is an ISA bus, and you see how there's actually two connectors here, and there's one here. This can go into either slot. And you're like, how does that possibly you know, mount on this back? Well, if you notice, there's three holes on each side of this uh, slot connector. So whether it's here or here, it sort of shifts the card sideways, depending on which connector you're connected to. And then you use the appropriate screws. Now the computer's fully assembled, let's just take a quick tour of this machine. On the left side of the Tandy, you have the power switch for the integrated power supply. And then you do have a cooling fan. And here's the power cable, which you cannot remove. Moving over, you have the three expansion slots. Currently configured with a memory expansion board and a serial expansion board. There's one more slot available here. Next to that is a digital RGB port. It's TTL compatible and you can use any CGA monitor with it. Next to that is a composite video output. This does output color. And then we have two proprietary expansion slots. We have the external floppy drive port and we have the printer port. As far as I know, the printer port is parallel compatible, but clearly you need a custom cable for it. Here's the model number and serial number of my computer. For the Tandy 1000 EX, this computer looks like it was built around 1986 based on the markings of the chips inside, but the serial number is a relatively high 107,646. Now we're looking at the right side of the computer. Here you can see the integrated 360K floppy drive. Below that are two non-standard Tandy controller ports. Radio Shack sold a whole line of joysticks which were compatible with these. We have a headphone jack for the audio output, and we have a volume knob which controls the headphone output volume but also the internal speaker volume. The keyboard, which has a very nice feel, has a slightly different layout. The biggest gripe I have is the caps lock key being here next to the shift key. This is one of my default locations for actually pushing on the key, so I accidentally hit caps lock all the time. Above F1 through 4, you have different modes. And while the computer is checking the RAM when you first turn it on, pushing F1 puts the computer into monochrome mode. This is really for the composite output, so it doesn't output a color signal. It just makes it clearer if you're using a monochrome screen. TV mode puts the computer into 40 column mode. Pushing F3 swaps the A and the B drive, so you can actually boot off the external floppy drive. Pushing F4 during the boot sequence actually puts the computer into 4.77 mode directly. This helps with compatibility with older games. Well, that's it for my video on the Tandy 1000 EX. The computer's working great, and here you can see it playing a Sierra online demo of a Christmas Carol card, something like that. The Tandy 3 voice sound is pretty cool, and this demo shows off the sound and the graphics of this computer. Everything's working fine on the computer now, and my fix was a definite success. With this computer being over 30 years old now, it's kind of a time warp to use it. It reminds me of how slow things were back in the day, and I don't just mean the processor speed. 
Loading up games or applications just takes quite a long time, and I think we were just more patient back in the old days. This was long before the days of solid state hard drives and 3 GHz processors. Our expectations were just really different back then. Well that's it for now. If you found any of this interesting, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Please put your comments down in the comments section below and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.